Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mitch, and I am one of our managers at our customer success department. And today with me, I have Anthony Margulis, the founder of Amalfi Estates. Anthony, thank you for joining us this afternoon. You're welcome, Mitch. Thank you for getting my name right. Man, that's a hard one. So that's, we're already doing 100% here. Thank you. Well, I mean, I've been practicing for hours before we started this, so there you go. <laughs> But today, today, what we're talking about is pining for luxury listings and how to get in. But one of the things that I want, I'd like everybody to take away is it's not about just breaking into the luxury market. It's also just how you elevate your average purchase price. And for anybody who was actually on the, the coffee call earlier this morning as we were doing a preview, Alex Wang had a coach who'd said, hey, the best way is agents to give yourself a raise is to elevate your purchase price. So first, let's talk about Anthony, and let's talk about you. So Anthony, you're the founder of Amalfi Estates. You've been in real estate now for 27 years. Sold I know I look over. a lot younger. I know I look a lot younger. People always say that. It can't be. 30 years, no way. You look like you're 30, no, right? I mean, it's 27. <laughs> it's not 30. It's it's definitely 27, but... I had a full head of hair, you know, when I started. Well, so did I, but I've been lucky enough to keep it for sure. <laughs> just a little gray in the beard. Uh, but, you know, besides just being in, in real estate for that long, I mean, you've sold, you know, a thousand homes, probably well over at this point. I mean, and we talk about, you know, not just a thousand homes, but that's, that equates to two billion in volume as well. Uh, and, but one of the things I think some people do know about you, especially those that are in the site community, probably others that don't, is that you, know, that you donate also 10% of every closing does go to charity as well. And so now over time, you know, you've donated what, about $1.3 million to charity. And not only donating $1.3 million to charity, well, that's a great number, but I think it's really important to, to realize just the impact of just the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of just different families that have now benefited from that as well. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it sounds like a lot when you say it. Wow, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I have four kids in college. Right. I, now I'm getting a little nervous. Maybe I should scale it back to 8 or 9%. I mean, 10% is Ex a lot. Um, Ex exactly. So let's talk about now, how do we break in and to the luxury market? So let's just start talking about the steps of how to get into the market. So, so what's the first step? Um, so, well, I first want to just say I have an amazing team. So uh, the team is really, I, I work for them and I always introduce them as, uh, you know, they're my boss mm -hmm. and I really work for them and, and I'm learning every day from mm -hmm. them. Um, and if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to help as many families as we have through our philanthropy and mm -hmm. through um, the charitable giving. So um, it's really our team that's that's done it. So I, I know that a lot of times people say it's it's me, but it's really the team. So that's kind of the hidden secret here. Uh, we have an amazing group of, of people. Um, Chad was on one of the panel's sessions earlier, um, and he's fantastic. And Sarah and Victoria are on a panel tomorrow. So it's really the team. I just want to acknowledge that. No, and, and I think one of the things of just knowing you and just especially over this this past couple of years now is I mean, your team is phenomenal. Uh, and just what you do with your team as well is fantastic. So let's talk about one just what what is luxury? What does it look like in your market? Yeah, I think it's interesting. So so this home you're looking at here is actually, it's almost 10 times the cost of the other home. And, you know, you can see why, right? It's it's really nice. It's, it's kept up well. And um, it's really not really true. <laughs> um, the, the key is really knowing what luxury is in, in your market. So a lot of times people get caught up with, well, you sell a million dollar home or you sell a two million or a five million. And Luxury, I mean, if you're selling $500,000 homes in, in your market and you want to sell $550,000 homes, that's what this session is about. It's how to really just increase and reach a higher price point and uh, eventually, you know, hit um, hopefully the top 10% of the price range 
in your market. And that's really the key um, that we've fortunately slowly been able to do over over time. And hopefully some of the tips from this session will help. Exactly. So I would say for, for all of our viewers out there, I want you to take a second and really think, you know, which home, which of these two homes now is 10 times more than the other? Drum roll. So drum roll. And we're keeping him in suspense. And <laughs> the PowerPoint. There we go. Okay, there we go. There yeah, we so, go. so you guys probably saw this one coming a mile away, but um, of course, <laughs> basically the, the house on the bottom uh, is three hundred fourteen thousand dollars. It's in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's thirty six hundred square foot home on a fourteen thousand square foot lot. The home above two point six five. 1,500 square foot home in Pacific Palisades on an 8,700 square foot lot. That's really close to land value. So, you know, a lot of times people say, well, Anthony, you're selling two and $3 million homes. That's what I'm selling, okay? Now we do sell more expensive homes as well, but you know, the reality is our two $2.6 million home is probably similar to a $300,000 home in most markets. So um, I just want people to be aware of that. A lot of times people get intimidated um, oh wow! I'm working with a, you know, a, a doctor or an actor or a celebrity or someone that you know, big CEO. Um, so anyway, just wanted to share those two. Well, no, and, and I think it's really fascinating if you take a look just between the two, right? Two point six five versus three hundred and fourteen thousand, and you know, it does boil on location, location, location. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yep. So talking about your team and kind of giving them that, that recognition that they deserve, here's the Amalfi team, you know, as it stands today. And Amalfi is definitely a growing team as well. They're always adding, you know, but I would say adding very smartly as well. Yeah. I think the, the key with this, I wanted to point out, especially since we're talking about breaking into a higher price point, is how do you call your team members? So a lot of teams would call their team members buyer's agents or sales associates. And I think it's a limiting title. So we decided five years ago to, to, to rename all of our associates sales partners. And that way, you know, when they're going on, a, they can take listings, they can represent buyers, and they deserve to be a sales partner. So you know, when they, even if they're a brand new agent. So when they're going on a meeting a very high end buyer, or maybe they're going on a very high end listing, you know, we can, they, I can introduce them as this is my sales partner. This is my partner. And all the business that, that I've done and the team has done, they can capitalize on that experience by being a sales partner. So um, for all of you listening, you know, think about how are you calling your team and is there a way possibly to elevate their title so maybe they can hit a little bit higher price point. Right, I think that's a really good topic because you know I think as people maybe don't realize is that it really does, words really matter, especially when you're talking about, you know, what is your title? It's really important. Right, and what we found too, just on the one last topic, when I, let's say I wanna go out of town on vacation or I, I'm, yeah, let's say uh, I wanna go out of town or one of you as agents want to go out of town. When I say I'm going to have a buyer's agent follow up with you or a sales associate, it doesn't carry the same weight. They're like, well, and when I say sales partner, not once has a seller or a buyer ever said no. They're like, wow, your your partner? This is your partner? I'm like, yeah, this is my partner. So um, it really it really helps a lot, um, especially if you know we can't be everywhere, right? We uh, we have to leverage our our time as our most valuable asset. Mm -hmm. So we can leverage our time and still give the credibility that our our teammates really deserve in, in that title. It's really important. Well, exactly. So let's talk about luxury clients and what do they need? And just obviously we see novice expert. What about you, know, you might want to talk about a little bit just like how you present yourself as well. 
Yeah, I think I think there's a misconception, Mitch. A lot of times people assume someone buying a four or five million dollar home or a million dollar home that they suddenly are smarter or they may be more successful just because they're very, very good at that one skill. So whatever that skill may be, maybe they're a surgeon or maybe they're an attorney or maybe they started a business and, you know, whatever they're developing is doing really well. Um, but the reality is they're not an expert in real estate. So you would be shocked at the number of, of either first time home buyers or even people who bought several homes have no understanding of the contracts or how to run comparables um, or how to negotiate an offer for that matter. So it's just really important you know, to understand that they're, they're just like you and I. And in fact, we are the experts. So uh, with the novice versus expert, isn't so much that the agent uh, needs to be the um, the expert. Of course, I'm assuming every agent listening to this is going to be an expert in their market. Mm -hmm. It's really the fact that the client is not an expert in real estate. Right. And, and do you think certain agents, as they're looking to kind of break into that like higher price point, you know, maybe use that maybe not so much as as an excuse, but as a way not to break in because they're maybe scared of just who that client's going to be. I think there's definitely some uh, in in intimidation um, because, you know, someone who makes a lot of money, it, you know, maybe it's a celebrity client or maybe it's a it's a um, athlete, a well-known athlete, or maybe it's just someone well-known in the community. It definitely can be a little intimidating. But the reality is uh, if you're just yourself and you know your your numbers and you know your market, uh, that's really all it, all it really entails. So. Okay, great. So obviously, yeah, know so your data. Know your data, yeah. So <laughs> I'm I'm one of the uh, the freaks of nature. I'm a high C. I don't know too many agents that are high Cs. For all you high Cs out there, raise your hand, okay? Um, so that's the DISC assessment, and those are the uh, – I could have been an actuary probably, you know, uh, or a bean counter, but I like numbers. So um, – I, uh, knowing your numbers is just so, so important, especially if you're going to break into a higher price point, because if your client is not sophisticated, the people they hire will be. And what I mean by that is their business manager, maybe their attorney. Um, they usually have a team of consultants, uh, for the most part, the, the, the more wealthier they are, they're going to have more people around them. And those people are going to want to know the numbers. They're going to want to know what the cost per square foot is in that price point. They're going to want to know what the unsold inventory index is for that market. They want to know why this is a good value and what you can do to add value to the property. So just knowing that, it's just really, really important just to, to really crunch the numbers and, and really know the data. Um, and I think there's several sites. Uh, Keeping Current Matters is a fantastic site just to know data um, in, in, in the market. Um, and it covers every market in the country, so it's it's pretty nice from that standpoint. Um, and there's several uh, different add-ons to different MLSs that you can kind of uh, really explore the data. So just know the data. I think it's really helpful. And it gives you confidence. You know, when you walk in and, and you know that the, you know, median price is X and the average price is this, and over the last three years, property values have appreciated this much, and this is how many homes have sold or how many condos. Um, it really becomes a valuable asset. Right. And from a just a presentation knowledge perspective, you know, if I'm an agent, I'm going on a listing presentation and I've got my numbers, you know, is it something where, you know, as, as agents that are just moving up into, into higher price points, is it something that you suggest, you know, they, they work to memorize on some averages? You know, do you think agents, sellers, clients mind if you bring notes to refer to, you know, what would you suggest in that regard? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of looking at notes. Um, what I recommend is just know one or two key bits of data and that will impress the heck out of them. So, so look at this chart here. We had a, a separate company put this together and it looks really impressive, <laughs> right? So, so we send this out to our clients each month and uh, graphically it's very appealing. Just know one or two key data points. Um, if you have to bring the notes and refer to them once or twice, that's okay. But the reality is, you know, just do role plays. Do role play with another agent in your office. Do role play with an admin or assistant or with your team leader. 
and just say, you know, the quick, like I set up this thing, uh, Quizlets, which is online cue cards. And we have 350 in there because I'm IC, right? And it's all this data points about asking about the market. So, um, and we have quizzes at our office meetings. And uh, when we used to be able to meet in, in person, I'd throw little chocolates to the person that, that won the uh, right answer. Uh, we can't do that through Zoom too easily, but uh, unless I have a really good arm. But yeah, that's it would be we interesting. Do. It would, Wonderful. right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about you now. Negotiation, you know, what helps to now just start separating you out from your competition? Yeah, I think so. And this is true, not just getting into a higher price point, but it's so hard to mm -hmm. distinguish and differentiate yourself from other agents out there. We all say we get better service. And, you know, we're a family and we have core values and things like that. But I think it's really important to drill deep and actually find measurable, quantifiable differentiation between you as an agent and your team and other competitors in your marketplace. So what we did is regarding negotiate. So um, I went to uh, Harvard Business School to take their advanced negotiating class. And um, I also have been teaching real estate negotiating and contracts at UCLA for 14 years. And I had the fortune to take the Caras negotiating seminar as well. And because of that, we did a study to see how much more our negotiating for our um, sales are compared to the open to the regular market. And it's been really, really helpful and beneficial to do that. So you can see, you know, we negotiate and this is for um, for listings. So sale to list price ratio, the market average is 94 percent. We're at 98 percent. So on an average $2 million sale, that's an $80,000 savings. So it's just, this is concrete you know, information that people go, wow, okay, that's a good reason to maybe hire you. So if you haven't signed up for additional negotiating classes, I highly recommend to do it. The Harvard one, you actually have to fly out there and take it, but during COVID, I'm guessing they may allow online classes, but when I took it, you actually had to fly out there to take the, the two-day mm -hmm. class. Right, and now that you're, teaching real estate principles and negotiations on contracts, you know, what's maybe a common question or something that you've just seen now, you know, over your 14 years that, that people just come up again and again and again, as far as just what's, uh, Well, regarding the contracts, I'm going to defer to Spencer because he is 10 times more knowledgeable <laughs> than I am. Um, you know, regarding negotiating, and I think a lot of, a lot of the people listening probably uh, espouse this, this theory. But it's really a win-win negotiating. When I started and I was new in the business, it was always a win-lose. And we would beat up the other side and feel, oh, look how great we are. And it really comes down to, to a win-win and, and making the other side feel good when it's all over. Because there's nothing worse than, you know, once you, if you're going to negotiate hard and then once you're, you close escrow and you have to get their mail or you have to ask the seller a question about something that broke in the house, and they're all upset because you did such a, um, you know, a difficult job in negotiating. So it's really about a win-win. Everyone's happy. I mean, that's probably the biggest takeaway. So. Okay. That's, I mean, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. And yeah, you know, as long as everybody feels like they get something, everybody's happy. You got a deal. Yeah, a hundred percent. So I so, love this one. This is awesome. So sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. <laughs> No, no, go ahead. I was just going to intro it, but tell, tell us why you love it. We should do a comedy routine. Well, I'll talk over you. You're talking. To... <laughs> I talk over everyone. So I'm an equal opportunity talker over. So that's what I always tell people. No, no. I'm an equal opportunity I was going to say, over. <laughs> I as I was talking over, uh, totally so this used to it by now. Great one. This is a great one. So, <laughs> so position, your, position yourself as the luxury expert. And this is a great example. One of our fantastic sales partners, Victoria, who's speaking tomorrow uh, morning. Uh, mm -hmm. She so we encourage all of our sales partners to write articles in the local paper. And we've had a 20, 30 year relationship with a local paper. So they don't charge us and we get great exposure and publicity to be the real estate expert in, in our in our area's local paper. So one of the um, topics I said, Victoria, you got to write on this. It's the first billion dollar listing in LA. 
And uh, before all you guys say that's impossible, it's a bunch of land, okay? I just wasn't a house. <laughs> but not to say there aren't like $300 million homes in Bel Air, but so she wrote an article on this and Paul, you know, we asked, we recommend to promote it on social media. And one of the, uh, a few of her clients said, congratulations on selling that house. <laughs> they got, they thought she was the, she was actually the, the agent who sold it. Um, now, of course, if she sold that, she probably could retire. But um, anyway, the point I'm getting is if you want to sell more expensive homes, leverage yourself and do creative things. Like it's not hard wherever your marketplace is, find the most expensive house that's sold in the last 12 months, write an article about it, publish it. You're not going to say you sold it, but you can definitely talk about that property as an expert in the luxury market. And it's a great way to leverage yourself, um, you know, to be, to be successful. So a, a little side story I haven't shared with anyone. This is a, this is our little secret, Mitch, right? You're not going to tell anyone, right? No, Promise? nobody, nobody. Okay, good, good. So when I started in real estate, I hadn't sold a house yet. There was a real estate magazine that went to every real estate agent in, in Los Angeles. And I took the cover of the magazine uh, and, and everyone's like, who is this guy? Like, <laughs> and I did that before I'd even sold a house. So it's just about leveraging yourself and marketing yourself and um, having the confidence to, and the knowledge, right? To be able to, um, to be good at what you do. No, absolutely. So don't tell anyone for, that. For those agents, no, I'm not going to tell anybody. Nobody will know. <laughs> but for those agents who want to write and want to publish and kind of take that step besides writing, you know, just an online blog post or creating some post somewhere online, you know, where do you suggest that, that somebody get something in print? Would we say the local paper? real estate magazine, what would be your suggestion to go down that road? Thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think, you know, it's so important to assemble a network of uh, all the local writers um, and editors, whether it's the local paper, um, whether it's radio, whether it's people doing blogs. Um, I mean, there are so many amazing websites out there where they interview top agents and they're always looking for content. So uh, there's a group called the National Association of Real Estate Editors, and we join them. And I've had some really good contacts with them. It's not expensive to join. But then you get the real estate writer for The New York Times and the L.A. Times and, you know, Boston Globe and Boston Herald and Washington Post and Wall Street Journal, and you actually have their emails and you're in the organization with them. So if you have a great idea and you want to pitch it out there, that's the way to do it. So that's that's my little advice. Okay. So network. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. And then what about TV exposure? Yeah, so a lot of people get intimidated by this. And, and I mean, if anyone gets intimidated by this, it's me, okay? I'm a, I'm a low I. I just kind of fake it right now, but I'm a low I, and I'm kind of, I'm really an introvert. Um, I love this COVID because I don't have to talk to people. I can stay inside my little cave, and my <laughs> team will tell you that. But you need to force yourself to get out there. And so there's there's TV shows in every single city that are looking for content. So, so I've been very, very fortunate, um, and I've been on several TV shows, Million Dollar House Hunters, Find Me a Luxury Home, Holiday Dream Home. And I've actually had my team be on these shows as well. And um, it's just great exposure. You know, suddenly someone, a friend a friend of one of my kids in DC will say, oh my God, my parents saw you on TV in, in DC. So it's just, it gets your name out there and it's, it's, it doesn't cost anything. And I just, I recommend it. If people are interested, I'm happy to, at the end of this, uh, email uh, a couple of the producers that we work with, see if they're in your, in your neighborhood. But um, I think it's a great way to, to get your exposure out there and position yourself as an expert um, in the luxury space or just real estate space in general. Okay. So got a couple questions from the audience. So first okay. question is, is how do you break into just your local luxury market if it's already saturated with agents? So how do you stand out? So, um, you know, the interesting thing is it's counterintuitive. It's much easier to break into the luxury market 
than not the luxury market. And the reason that is, everyone's getting into the home, first time home buyer market, right? Everyone is. But right. very few people are, are going, have the confidence to go, well, I'm gonna start working with high, higher end buyers or, or sellers. So what I recommend, I know most of us can't do open houses right now, but once in a few months, hopefully we'll be able to start doing open houses, is go to open houses for really high end listings and kind of see how these agents act and see how they dress. I mean, the reality is if you're gonna sell higher priced homes, is your attire matching the clientele? So for example, if I'm showing homes in Malibu, I'm not gonna wear a sport coat. They'll kick me out of Malibu. I'm not gonna wear a tie, right? They wear like Birkenstocks and shorts, you know, $10 million showings. So it depends, you know, know your clientele, that's important. Make sure your car, you know, is appropriate. So if you need to lease a more expensive car because you want to show more expensive properties um, or reach a higher clientele, um, it's just important to, to kind of do that. But, but just what I recommend um, is uh, if you can go to open houses once they open up, start looking at a lot of the high-end inventory and start getting to know it well. And when it's high-end, it could be 20% higher than what your average price is now. So if you're selling a $300,000 home, don't start looking at $3 million homes, you know, start looking at $400,000 homes or $500,000 homes and, um, and just slowly get, get comfortable, get comfortable with that. Right. So it's little increments of little steps to, to get you to where you need to go. And from a negotiation aspect, do you go for a 6% listing commission on every home or 6% total commission on every home? Well, we're not supposed to be talking commissions. However, um, commissions are negotiable. So uh, in every market, they're different. Uh, in the west side of LA, uh, the general commission's about 5%. Um, so each mm -hmm. side gets about 2.5%, 2.5%. I know in some markets, uh, the agent will take a higher percentage than the buyer's agent. It doesn't really happen in our market mm -hmm. per se. Um, and then the higher end, uh, like in the top 10% or 20%, uh, we will see, it depends on the price point, we can see that 5% uh, be reduced to 4 or even 4.5% because the price range can be so high. So I hope that answers the question. So really, it's, yeah, I mean, I think really the takeaway is it, is it still stays commensurate with what the market's bearing at that point. Yeah, I mean, I, look, the reality is this. There is so much business out there. It's the plentiful mentality, not the scarcity mentality. So I look at, my, my coach told me this right. once, you look at business like there's a river and all you have to do is position yourself to be in that river to collect the business. So if you look at the how many hundreds and hundreds of millions of actually billions of dollars of transactions are happening in each of your marketplaces. So in LA, let's mm -hmm. just say there's realistically, um, I'm going to say probably, I don't know, probably 2 trillion a year in real estate transactions are mm -hmm. happening. And if I just want to do 300 million or 500 million or a billion, that's such a small percentage of the total river of business. So there's so much business out there. I know people focus on, well, I, you know, what's the commission and what's this and what's that. But with the plentiful mentality, there is so much business out there. Um, I recommend focusing on how you can help your client and less worrying about the commission. Not that you were worrying about the commission, whoever asked that, but that's just right. my, but I, uh, yeah. No, and I think it goes to like a shift in mindset, right? With the shift in mindset is, look at the total amount of business that, that can be had. Do I really need to focus on this one piece when there's so much other business out there as well? Correct. And one thing to do, yep. a lot of people, uh, we did it early in our career, is if there's a listing out there and it may be overpriced, and a lot of times you'll be like, I don't want to take an overpriced listing. It's going to mm -hmm. sit there. Maybe it's not great for my mm -hmm. brand if it's on the market a long time. I may have to spend a lot of money. But use a, a, an expensive listing, right? A more a higher luxury listing, as leveraging your ability to practice some really cool marketing pieces, which we're going to show you in the next couple of slides. What I mean by that is this: right. if you have a three hundred thousand dollar, you know, house, are, you may use Matterport and you may do a drone video, but you're not going to do TV, right? You're not going to do virtual um, presentations, mm -hmm. you know, binding. Uh, some of the really cool stuff that you need to spend money on. But what you do is it gives you an excuse to use those things. And now you have a marketing portfolio that Ashley's going to love at side that now you can leverage to get more other high end listings. Right. 
Exactly. Yeah. And speaking of just yeah. leveraging high-end listings and leveraging just different things you can do, let's talk about when we can get back to it, you know, sponsoring luxury events and attending luxury events. Yeah, I think sponsoring events is great. Um, so we've, we've been really, really fortunate. We've sponsored um, the local uh, polo tournament in the Palisades for the last uh, 19 years. We don't play it, but we sponsor it. And it's just good for our brand. We sponsored a local golf tournament uh, for our kids' school for probably 20 years now. And just think of things. It could be maybe a car show, an antique car show. It could be um, if there's a yacht club uh, near you guys, you can kind of get involved in that. Um, just things of that nature, kind of put your thinking cap on. And there's a lot of ways to reach a higher price clientele. Gotcha. What are, now what about networking? Yeah, I think networking is, is, is the key. Um, so I've started several uh, networking groups over my um, career. And, and a couple that have been the best. Um, so, you know, the Latips of the world and the BNIs and the Chamber of Commerces, they're nice, don't get me wrong, but I prefer groups where you're the exclusive agent in that group. So I've started a couple like that. And I know Latip, I think BNI, you're exclusive agents as well. But like the Chamber of mm -hmm. Commerce, you're not so much, or, or groups like that, let's say. Um, so my suggestion is, um, Ideally, is is getting involved in a networking group that where there's one only one agent allowed um, and really high end. So, you know, you really want the people, the estate planning attorneys, the um, business managers, the accountants, uh, the high end mortgage brokers. You know, as opposed to, you know, no offense, but maybe the chiropractor, you know, or the people of that nature. So, people that are going to uh, associate with people that have a higher net worth clientele. Are we short on time? Is that right. where we're, are we okay on time? We're, we're okay. moving through. <laughs> but, I'll speed it up. I'll speed it up. <laughs> uh, so marketing though, but from a marketing perspective, but we want to hit yeah, marketing perspective. Yeah. This, so this is a magazine in our area and, and most people do the inside of the magazine. I like doing the cover. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly in our market, this cover of this magazine is about $1,500. But most agents don't do it. Mm -hmm. So I get five pages inside the magazine and I get the cover of the magazine. So it just impresses a seller that you're taking the time and the effort to really do something like it. So if there's a wow factor where you can get the cover of a magazine for a higher end listing that you may be trying to get, I'd recommend doing it. Okay. So we talked a, you talked a little bit about this, about drones, videography, you know, what are some takeaways? Maybe what are some, some things that luxury clients might be expecting that others aren't? So we do aerial drone and, and video on every single one of our properties, unless it's a condo. And then what we found is, because, you know, we don't, what, how impressed is a, is a uh, let's say, a $800,000 homeowner knowing that we have drone and video that we're using mm -hmm. the same person that we do our 10 or $15 million listings. <clears throat> So it just has a consistency for our brand. So it's not like, look, we're only doing this for our, our people that we really care more about. That's not a good look. So what we like to do is offer pretty much the same, you know, uh, um, video quality as 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 uh, for all of our properties. Now for the super high end, we're going to do a little bit more for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah. <clears throat> now would so there I'll, be I'll, from a? We'll, we'll go faster on the next couple because if we for. <laughs> Well, we've got some questions too, which I'm going to throw in a, an okay. audience question. So are there, are there any ways that you, when we talk about our higher end clients, are there any ways that you actually service those higher end clients, maybe differently than you might service a first time home buyer, say the lower purchase price? Yeah. So things that we would do um, pre Uber, uh, we would rent a black SUV with a driver and pick them up at the airport or their home. And the nice thing about that was then they wouldn't have to be in my car. I wouldn't have to, I could talk to them much easier. I would have lunch provided in the car for them, you know, in, in coolers with, with uh, um, drinks. And then the nice thing about it, the driver can just drop you off right in front of the home. You're not walking a block away. It saves a lot of time. It's classy. And it was such a minor, minor cost. Now you can just rent a black Uber and, and have the same, you know, uh, aspect. But that's just an example 
Um, if it's raining out, I'll bring three or four extra really nice umbrellas um, okay. just to have them. Um, you know, just things things like that. You just want to kind of see whatever you can to really cater to their needs. Great. So let's talk about marketing now and, and marketing not just locally now, but let's talk about internationally. Yeah. So this is the best bang for your buck. So this is List Hub Global. List Hub Global. And most MLSs have partnerships with it. And if they don't, it's mm -hmm. it's incredibly inexpensive. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think I pay $150 a year for all my listings. And it translates them in, I think, 20 different languages. And to your seller, it's really impressive. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you can you know, hit 60 million buyers and investors in more than 60 countries, that's pretty impressive. And then you can also share with them you know, the five biggest markets that are coming uh, internationally. So you can say, look, China and Canada and the UK and Mexico and India, that's pretty impressive. And then we also show, you know, the properties being translated in those languages as well. So that's the best bang for your buck, um, you know, to impress a seller uh, for higher end properties, I think. Right. And let's, so. yeah, and I think let's show an example of translating your listings in other languages. Yeah. So that's Chinese, Which, I believe. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so if anyone's Chinese, yes, this yeah, was on, probably correct me. Yeah. Was it on Chinese? Okay, good. I don't want to misspeak here. I'll be like, I feel silly. <clears throat> um, so that's just an example of what our listing looks like. And that's through List Hub Global. So. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And what about just presenting yourself? Just listing buyer presentations? Yeah. Yeah. So these are by, uh, we're not allowed to give out books like this during COVID. Uh, we're not allowed to hand stuff out, but, um, uh, when we were, uh, this is kind of some cool binding. Um, there's a company, uh, we have the binding equipment called uh, Unibind, and it just makes it easier. You can print your own stuff and then bind it in house. Um, and the thing below, it's pretty cool. So that's a, um, that's a, uh, um, blank on the name of it. Uh, what do we call that Mitch? Like a video brochure. That's a, it's a video. It's a video book. There we go. I had a senior yep. moment. So that is a video book. And what's super cool about it is you think it's really expensive, but it's not. They're like, if you do, I think you get like 50 of them at a time. You can get it down to about $50. And it plays a video. So it can be a buyer video. It can be a listing appointment video. And um, it's just cutting edge. It's outside the box. And you give it to your client. So, you know, when someone else walks in with a little piece of paper listing presentation and you walk in with a video book that you're giving them, it's pretty impressive. And then other little key things you can do, depending on the price range, there's actually a button you can put on the video book that will actually call you. It's a phone card chip. I know it sounds crazy, but you can push the button and, and it actually goes right to your cell phone. It's a little more expensive. But imagine if you sent that book. This one idea is going to be worth the cost of admission, you guys. I know it's free, but um, you could you could send that to 50 of the top business managers in your marketplace, and it's one button on there, and then they would go, well, this is silly. You can I can call someone, I think, a button, and then it goes right to you. So it's pretty cool. They're video books, um, and uh, Americhip is the company that I like. They were the first ones to come out with it, Americhip.com, uh, and I'm happy to talk to anyone about it if they have questions. Great. So let's talk about some promotional items. And actually, on on this vein, too, do you actually get or do you maybe differ your client gifts depending on their price points? I do. I do. So Brittany, um, our marketing coordinator, is fantastic. Brittany, are you listening? Um, and she's amazing. So she put together um, an amazing assortment of client gifts. And what we did is we catered it to the five senses. So we have one based on, on sight, one based on smell, one based on taste, one based on an experience. So um, uh, for example, one of them will send someone a lobster dinner uh, for four. And, and they basically have to cook the lobsters. You have to check in advance that they're comfortable doing that. But that's an experience, right? It's not just a gift certificate to a local restaurant, it's giving them a lobster dinner. So these are some of the things that we've been able to do. And we keep a list so we know what we've given to people. Um, on the top left, that's a pizza oven. We give that as a housewarming gift to most of our clients. What's super cool about it, among other things, is that it's really easy to use. 
They can invite, you know, once COVID's over, they can invite their friends over. Right now it's just their family. You can make a pizza in two minutes. It's very social. And it's just a great, great gift to give people. So um, I'm really big on, I don't like giving gift baskets. I don't like giving, you know, gift certificates. I just, I like giving more unique gifts that if someone has put some thought into them. Perfect. So Starbucks in a high-end okay, market, and we've got about five minutes left. Okay five. <laughs> How many more slides? <laughs> Just so a we, few more. we got a couple? Okay, okay. So this Just is a new, unique two. idea. So if you want to break into a higher price point, I did this with Victoria in my office, and basically um, uh, you can hear the dog barking in the background. That's my dog. Yeah. Um, so um, <laughs> if you want to break into a higher price point, what you do is we have these little cards made up and it basically says in the continued spirit of giving 10% of our commission at charity and you can word it any way you want, this drink is on us. And we went to Starbucks and we said, here is you know $500 um, for the next 30, 40 people in line. And we actually picked up several amazing clients by it. And then we would sit at a table and the person at the cashier would point to us. Um, and it was just, it was a great way to meet people for a very inexpensive cost. So if you want to break into a higher market, just find the local Starbucks in the most expensive neighborhood that you want to break into. And it's just a, it's a fun thing to do. It's just fun. It's really fun and a great way to meet people. Great. So we'll, 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 we've talked about giving and just all the families that you've helped, you know, over the course, I would say, of, of just your career. And I think that's a really important piece to take home for everybody is that it's, you know, when you give back, I think just the, the good karma, the good deeds does come back to you. And I think we've seen that, especially in, in your business. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, it ties in with the next slide about the charity boards. So, exactly. so we're really, really excited. Sarah on our team just got selected yesterday or actually last week to be on one of our charity board partners, the people concern. And this, this, just so you see, you can see what an amazing group that, that our team is and how amazing Sarah is. It's a $60 million a year charity, $60 million a year charity. And they selected her to be on the board last week of that charity. And so it's, it's just a great way. It's not just writing a check. It's, it's getting involved with that charity and volunteering your time. So we encourage every single person in our company to get involved in a charity as a volunteer and ideally to get on their board. So we think it's great, great way to, to network. And uh, you know, who does not want to work with someone on their charity board to, if they say they want to help buy or sell a house, they don't look at you as a salesperson. They look at you as a Ex community member and, and a leader. Exactly. So to, to kind of wrap up for those uh, questions that we weren't able to, to get to, we apologize. Uh, but, 10 point action plan kind of let's just kind of review everything that we've covered define luxury you know what it is in your market you know and where do you want to break into a higher price point but also make sure that you look the part as well and that goes for for what your area is because obviously malibu could be very different than beverly hills versus different parts of San Francisco and so on. So that goes into making sure you know your luxury market, right? Average purse price, average purchase price, median days on market, you know, know some stats, know them well, know them by heart. So you can really knock the socks off some of your clientele, right? Take a luxury seminar, advanced negotiation classes, write articles for local papers online, get yourself out there. Don't forget, you, you want to sponsor a 10 luxury events, join networking groups. I, I don't think we can stress the importance of how important it is to network. Uh, and that goes into joining charity boards, right? Go visit higher end open houses as well and analyze the listing agents marketing material. And I would say have a goal to increase your average sales price by 20% and then let's figure out a way to do that. So, Anthony, well, we've got some just final seconds here. I really want to thank you for your time today. I think there was lots of great pieces of information that I think our team and others can definitely pull from this to really help increase their just average purchase price and help them just kind of break through that ceiling into that next year for themselves. So thank you so much for your time this afternoon. You're welcome.
And I'll be, I guess there's a ask the questions coming right after this. So thank uh, you, yeah, Mitch. there's a, a mixer as well. All right. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. And we will see you at the mixers and we will see you tomorrow as well.